Folks, today we begin the third letter. It's a bit uh, mystical. Mm -hmm. And we will uh, excuse me, put our hand to it, our minds to it. We begin with a a verse from Isaiah, Yishayahu. Yilbush Tzedaka Kisirya in the Koiva Yeshua Beresha. And he, God, garbs himself with Tzedaka, with charity, as with a coat of mail and a helmet of salvation upon his head. Just um, the knights of yore used to go into battle and used to wear a coat to protect them. It had chinks on it, links on it, metal ones to protect. And there were a bunch of different chinks on it. Um, so that way there could be movement. It wasn't just one big metal piece to protect, you know, from a, from a sword or from a, an arrow or whatever. It was uh, enabled in enabling a person to have movement. So it was different. Um, it's a, a coat of mail that's made of these chinks on it. Right? So that's the metaphor. That God garbs himself with charity as a coat of mail. Right? So from here, the Talmud, the sages in the Talmud, they learn out just as a chain mail, coat of mail, is made up of all individual scales, right? And the scales add up to a large coat of mail, right? Makes sense. So too it's with charity. Individual coins given to charity add up to a great amount. So the obvious question is, like, what do we need a metaphor over here from a coat of mail that to allow me to understand that just like, a, you know, if you only had one scale, two scales, three scales, not much of a coat would you have. When do you have a full coat that is a protective coat for the knights of yore that would fight in battle? It was when it, you had a lot of scales on it that add up to many, to, to, to a coat of mail. So um, that makes sense. That's obvious. And it's also obvious that if you only give a couple of coins to charity, it, you know, it adds up to a couple of coins. If you give many coins, it adds up to a large amount. But what do we need the metaphor over here? Kind of self-understood, this idea. So obviously there's something in the metaphor that is much deeper and profound that we need to appreciate and understand. So the meaning is as follows. Charity, tzedakah, is greater than all of the other commandments. Now, we're going to learn a lot about charity, as many of the letters written by the Alter Rebbe is to encourage greater giving of charity. And we're going to see it from all different angles, all different manners of what is the value, the importance, and why charity is greater than all other commandments. So here he says, because their performance produces garments for the soul. Torah, we know, is like food, right? We're learning Torah right now. It's food. It feeds us. It feeds our faith. It feeds our uh, strengthening uh, the in our in uh, you know the inwardness of the individual, the mind, the heart. It gives strength. It right and vitality. But charity and produces a garment, which a garment is on the person, not in the person, as food, right? It beautifies the person. So this is what it does. And the garments, where do they come from, these garments? They come from the infinite light of the blessed Ain't, of, a, of the Ain't Saif, from a level that what we call that encompasses the world. It's a light of God that is a powerful light that encompasses 
all of cre- transcends all of creation. Is it here? Of course it's here in a transcendent manner. Right? So meaning, there's two ways of vitality that come from God, two basic ways. Mamale and Soivit. Mamale means the light of God as it as it fills the worlds, meaning it becomes integrated and manifests within creation and animates it in a internalized way. So, for example, you know, the eye that sees, so the, the soul gives vitality to the eye from the soul in a manner that the eye can see or the ear can hear and the arm could act like an arm. That is all vitality that is um, filling from within. And then there is the life force that comes from God, that he illuminates the world, that is encompassing. It's not from within, it's not filling, it's not um, uh, internalized, but it's encompassing, meaning it's not limited to the finite spiritual capacity of the created being. Therefore, it transcends it and affects it, so to speak, from a distance, so to speak. In, in a sense, from a distance, it's not from it's not a physical distance, but it's a distance in the sense that it is not um, discernible by us. It's beyond. Okay, so so these garments that are brought into being, right, that we're talking about. which allows us, as we will understand, as garments not only beautify us, but they also protect us from the elements. So, when we fulfill a a mitzvah down here, we create a garment. A garment that will bring a protection to the soul. Was in a protection to the soul. So, the protection is that the light of God is very powerful. And that when our soul is in the Garden of Eden, after we finish our purpose here in this world, we will get a ray of light of this, what we created now in doing a mitzvah. That ray of light is a powerful light that is not um, um easily absorbed, so to speak, or um, entertained. How will it be entertained? Because of the garment that we create through the mitzvah now. The experience the soul will have in Gan Eden will be via the garment that we've created through the mitzvah that we've done now, creating that garment that will allow us to have a radiance of God's light that comes from Soivet, that is an encompassing light, that we will experience in Gan Eden. So we experience a ray, a glimmer of that light in Gan Eden, that we will actually have pleasure by apprehending that illumination of the uh, infinite light that is encompassing. But in this world, as our sages say, um, there's no reward for the fulfillment of mitzvahs. Meaning, reward meaning over here, no experience. Here, we don't get a mere glimmer or reflection of the infinite light of God. We have the essence of that light. But that light is so great and beyond us that we don't get an experience of it. So, for example, when... You know, we're studying Torah now. 
um, yes, our soul can be uplifted. But we're not talking about the soul being uplifted through the teachings of Torah. We're talking about an experience with the Ein Saif, with the limitless, with the uh, encompassing light of God that transcends this world. So we don't experience it because we get the, we get we get that complete light, but it's not something we can experience. In Gan Eden, we get a glimmer of that light that we produce through the mitzvah. And we need the garment, right, that we produce now through doing the mitzvah that will allow us to experience, right? Because the element that is in Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, is a powerful light of God. For us to be able to have any pleasure from it, we need to have a, a garment that gives us the capability. And we create the garment through our mitzvahs that we do today and during our lifetime that the soul will indeed have the apprehension and the pleasure of the glimmer of the divine. But this world, no. This world, there isn't that reward, meaning that experience of the divine. Again, why is it not possible over here is because here we don't get a glimmer. Here we get the essence of the divine and we're not able to to have that experience. However, the practice of charity and deeds of kindness, there are fruits that we do enjoy partially in this world. In other words, that we can enjoy something that we get from this encompassing transcendent light of God that does some microscopic ray of that light enter this world. Meaning enter and that we have something tangible from it. That we have something tangible. And this is the metaphor. This is the metaphor of the gaps of that garment that we spoke about, the coat of mail, right? That is a garment that God garbs himself with, meaning the infinite light of God, the transcendent light of God, through us arousing, through our mitzvah of being charitable, we arouse above in the divine that God garbs himself with this metaphorical coat of mail that has uh, the, the chinks that hold on it, the scales, many scales. But in the metaphor right now, what's important is, remember we said it's not just one body piece of mail, but it's uh, of, of, uh, of iron, right? But it's it's little scales of it that are linked on this garment to give you movement. So here, when you move, when you did your mitzvah of charity, you moved a scale and you made an opening. An opening, and this is the metaphor, that the infinite light of God could come in a microscopic manner and it will uh, diffuse that light, radiate this in this world from the sphere of chesed that will result in longevity in this physical world, and meaning long life, through your act of charity. And with the left arm, right, because you pick up with your left arm, right arm and your left arm, so the left arm, metaphorically, you are now also opening up a scale that there can be something, you know, that there can be a microscopic thing that can enter, not a spear, <laughs> Right, but a microscopic thing that can enter, and what will that be? That will result from the sphere of Gvura, will result wealth and honor. Likewise, uh, splendor and maj majesty and splendor and uh, beauty and so on and so forth, all those things. Now, we said that this is a very powerful light. The problem with a powerful light is that it can um, 
be abused because it can now uh, be nurtured by negative forces. Because something that's an encompassing light, right? So it encompasses not just the good, but the negative force too. And therefore there could be through your charity that you give that now allow this light to enter in this world, in a world where there is no reward, but here there is a reward, long life, wealth, and honor through your charitable giving and your acts of loving kindness. But to prevent that there shouldn't be any forces that are drawn for, to this in a negative way, so a person below has to shield themselves, to guard themselves from any physical or spiritual harm. Well, that this encompassing light, because it's a very powerful light that we're talking about, right? So this is, again, the metaphor of that, um, the scales that are loose fitting in a sense that, you know, you can have movement. Well, now that the light came in, so that light now may produce something negative also, because again, it's an encompassing light, so it encompasses more than just goodness. It can, it can be nurtured in a negative place, but the metaphor is in, when you put your hands down, the coat of mail is completely covered. Nothing, no spear can get in. Nothing can penetrate. No negativity can penetrate. So that is the idea over here. And therefore, this is the teachings that we had that we mentioned earlier when we quoted Isaiah that God garbs himself with a coat of mail. So just as a chain of mail is an individual scales that add up to a large coat, so is a charity that all individual coins add up to a, a great amount. So now we have understand the metaphor that through charity, what we are accomplishing is something that's unique in this world, right? That we have something that's palpable. Longevity of life through being charitable. Wealth and honor through being charitable. <clears throat> and, um, and it will not and that's the, the ray of light that comes through the the, the coat in, in the coat of mail, right? That God garbs Himself, right? Why does it say God garbs Himself with that? Maybe He garbs Himself with something else. No, this specifically, right? That we elicit when we do the the mitzvah being of charity, and also it says it adds up to a great amount. So great, the word great refers to the name Havaya, um, which is exceedingly glorified without limit and without restriction. In other words, it's a great light of God that you bring into your life through being charitable. And that's Today's class, powerful idea. So, this is one angle of why charity and acts of loving kindness are the, the greatest of mitzvahs. We're going to see a lot more in other letters of the uniqueness of charity and what makes it so great, right? <clears throat> well, we'll leave this um, for the moment. We said a lot here, which I'm not going to repeat right now. You have questions? Ask your questions. Well, two question marks before you ask a question. Also, the questions, please leave. Um, the questions will be only that the things that are concerning the topic at hand, 
you know, yesterday we had other questions that were not concerning. Um, those are wonderful, but not, you know, we'll deal with them at other times. Um, and also, the conversation, the the comments that are made online, also keep them within the framework of what we're learning. Um, that would be uh, uh, what we say respectful. Okay. Uh, unless, of course, a person needs a blessing for something or, you know, they're celebrating something. So then, you know, of course, share that because then you're sharing, you know, in our community. And that's beautiful. But um, other things, uh, leave them for another place or another time. Uh, Davida, does a sin we do negate any mitzvah we do? Mm, yes and no. You know, you did something, you know, uh, n knowing the fact that you've created a bond with Hashem through the mitzvah, that can't be taken away. Um, you know, but sin could not take away the mitzvah, but could take away other things. Yes. If you do good, good is done. Connection with God is made. Can the next moment you disconnect? Of course. But what you did now is not a disconnect. Well, there's maybe the same garb when Michelle comes, and then it'll be completely revealed. Right? Then it'll be completely revealed. Now it's only a ray that's a, a, a microscopic ray that's revealed. In, in the reward. Only we don't get the reward now. When the Shia comes, we get the reward. The ultimate reward is in what you do, you are connected. In what you do, there isn't a consequence of the of what you do merely that you experience. That's what we're getting here with longevity of life, wealth and honor, but you actually experience your divine connection. Nothing more rewarding than that. When we do tshuva, doesn't it turn our sins into mitzvahs? Yes. Absolutely. Denise, if doing an act of loving kindness to someone, but the one who receives is not accepting it in that light, does that does your kindness turn to negativity? Um, good question. Denise, if you don't mind bringing that up in TRC, okay? That's a TRC question. Uh, very specific and very good question. Excellent question. But it's weather depending. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we will. Okay. Yenta de la Benta, does the kavana of doing a mitzvah affect the reward or accomplishment of the mitzvahs? Yes, it affects the connection. Absolutely, it does. Yes, absolutely. Um, Michael, something on topic. Yes, when I uh, when I do uh, giving tzedakah, and I give something for me. And the light comes in. It, it's it's uh, that I have to overcome the selfishness and the animus, animus so that I give something away. And then um, light there comes light in, and you said that there is uh, can also be uh, you know a bad light come in. When I am the moment not humble, and I would be arrogant that I oh I give sadaka more than others or you no know, I give sadaka. Yeah, when when I, there is a uh, there's a glimpse of, of arrogance in that. Right. And exactly. I that I don't that Mr. said I don't hold the hand and then a bad light comes. Sorry, what does that mean? Uh, can how does this uh, have together with the hand with the hand? This is when what, what do you mean the I hand? I don't, I don't follow what it, what do you mean no, then? That's also, but then the bad light comes in. Now, again, we're talking about over here that, that there's something unique about being charitable, 
that brings a light of that generally generally in this world we do not have a reward for what we do and the reward meaning the reward meaning the experience of the divine as the soul has in Gan Eden that has a glimmer there and has great apprehension and pleasure from the divine okay yeah, and when I am arrogant in this moment, then that light comes. Can come yeah, so we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking here, yeah, that in doing it, I don't know, the Alter Rebbe didn't say arrogance in what he spoke about over here, but there's a possibility of when you are charitable that yet you can feel maybe, you know, self satisfied perhaps and, and the like, and therefore that could create an arrogance. Uh, he didn't say that, but. You know, maybe that's a way that we can understand it. Yes, thank you. Darren, does the ten or the seven Noachai commandments from God sufficient to refrain us from abusing the light of God? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, amazing. Okay, good. Uh, rewards us but doesn't bring dignity to who is receiving the charity? What is it? We need to give charity in a dignified way. That's part of the mitzvah of giving charity. Um, that we do it in a dignified way. We don't do it in a way that, you know, oh, I, I, some, I, to continue Michael's thought, um, that we can give and like, you know, how... How lucky I am, I'm the giver, I don't have to be the recipient, and I'm the one who could, you know, be on top of the world and giving. You know, that might not be the right way to give, isn't the right way to give. The right way is the, how lucky I am that I could do the mitzvah, and that I could, be, uh, you know, help another. Um, and um, do something for another. And I am more benef I am uh, more thankful that I could do this than the be than the beneficiary is in receiving. They're receiving money. I'm receiving an attachment, a bond to God, a light of God that embraces me. More on that to come. All right, folks. Um, Rambam coming up. Uh, just a reminder for uh, for everybody, TRC this week will be Thursday. We didn't have last night because of Tisha B'Av. It will be Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern, Daylight, Eastern Daylight Savings Time um, for those who are part of the TRC. If you're not yet, strongly look into it. I strongly suggest you look into it. Go to uh, tanyarabbi.com or .org and uh, find out more. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zif and Kedesh Manchal Kanavar. It's a privilege and pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day. Be well.